Hello, and welcome to Applied Photophysics webinar. My name is Pavel Rajov. I'm application scientist with Applied Photophysics here in the US. We manufacture instrumentation for biophysical characterization of molecules, such as stop flow spectrometers for studying kinetics of biomolecular reactions, uh, circular dichroism spectrometers for studying chirality of organic molecules, and more. Uh, today, however, I'd like to talk about a particular accessory for our SX20 stop flow spectrometer called Photodiode Array, or PDA. Uh, this accessory can add some really useful capabilities uh, to your existing stop flow system. And uh, in this uh, webinar, uh, I would like to uh, provide you with more information about what it is and how it can be used for kinetic measurements using our system. So uh, stick around to find out. Um, so in this webinar, I'd like to cover some basic um, uh, information about how a stop flow uh, instrument works um, and what it's used for, then dive, dive deeper into the differences between uh, absorbance detection versus detection using a photodiode array. And then naturally, I, I'd like to then cover how PDA works and the types of PDA that we have currently available. Um, in the latter portion of, of the webinar, I will cover how our software can process the data collected using PDA accessory and also give examples of uh, types of research questions where the use of PDA would be very advantageous to you. Um, so to get everyone on the same page uh, before going into what PDA is and all of that, let's start with what stop flow spectroscopy is all about. Um, briefly, um, it is a spectroscopic technique that allows to characterize the rates of fast reactions on the timescales between milliseconds to about several minutes. In principle, um, this involves two reagents being rapidly mixed together and the flow uh, stopped in the observation cell. This allows us to record uh, changes in the optical signal like um, absorbance, fluorescence, fluorescence polarization, and so on over time. Uh, as the reaction proceeds in the observation cell. Um, the kinetic analysis of resulting trace can determine um, several things, such as uh, reaction rate or rates, uh, but also information on reaction complexity, such as uh, short-lived short intermediates. Determining the rate constants alongside uh, uh, fitted curves and residuals is what is actually typically done after acquisition of the signal. As I mentioned uh, previously, there are actually several types of optical signals that can be monitored in a given stop flow reaction, um, like absorbance, fluorescence, and, and actually quite a few others. But in this webinar, I would like to focus on the absorbance-based signals. Uh, so um, what is really the difference between absorbance detection and a photodiode array detection option? Well, both are actually absorbance-based, but uh, the first, the absorbance, just uses a standard photomultiplier tube or PMT detector that can capture signal at a single wavelength per experiment. Uh, in order to do that, we need to supply a source of light at a single wavelength to the observation cell. Uh, in our standard SX20 system, it is done by selecting a wavelength on, of the monochromator, while in our LED system, it is done by simply using an LED with the wavelength of your choice. Now, on the contrary, when you use a, a photodiode uh, detection option, you are actually able to capture kinetic traces for an entire absorbance spectrum simultaneously, rather than just a kinetic trace at a single wavelength. Uh, this is due to the fact that detector, this PDA detector is in fact a, a 256 diode array. And in this instance, capturing uh, the traces across the spectrum allows for more robust rate constant calculation. So let's discuss how PDA works in a little bit more detail. Uh, so first, during installation, P PDA is directly mounted in place of uh, absorbance detector and actually requires uh, addition of an, a separate electronics module and an optional deuterium lamp for specific spectral region applications. But I'll touch on that more in uh, just a moment. It is also worth um, mentioning that previously our PDA option uh, that we used to, used to provide was actually not directly mounted and detector light throughput was therefore kind of less than uh, what, what we have currently with, with a directly mounted option. So after installation, 
and calibration of the PDA detector, you switch the signal mode to photodiode array in our software, and then just select uh, uh, experimental parameters like an acquisition time window, and then run experiment as you would otherwise run a standard absorbance-based uh, experiment. Uh, so the resulting traces uh, can be either analyzed individually or simultaneously by using our Pro-K4 uh, software for global data fitting. As I mentioned, uh, PDA detection actually allows you to capture traces across, across the absorbance spectrum. And that's, that's true, but there are actually several, uh, several PDA options that we have available depending on the exact range, um, the wavelength range that you might be interested in. First, and I think based on my experience, most common uh, range is the PDA for UBV's uh, uh, region between 280 to 725 nanometers. But um, however, if your applications demand looking in a far UV region, um, then using a standard xenon lamp that is supplied with the SX20 system is just not enough. And in this case, a deuterium lamp is used. This lamp, uh, together with a UV PDA option, gives you uh, the range of 200 to 400 nanometers specifically. Um, and lastly, if your region of interest is actually in the visible to near infrared region, we actually also have a specific PDA option just for that from 330 to 1100 nanometers. As I've already, I've already mentioned that after collecting PDA traces, you can either analyze them individually in our main software, um, which is fairly straightforward, but you can also have an option to use dedicated software for global data fitting called Pro-K4, which we also supply with our instruments. This software was designed specifically in mind uh, to help researchers study more complex reaction mechanisms. And this particular software includes an ability to do several things, such as perform singular value decomposition of the data sets, um, do global optimization of reaction parameters, fitting to reaction models directly, but also an ability to perform simulations to estimate kinetic rate constants. So quite a lot of things. And I think this is a very powerful tool for the for PDA applications specifically. That's not to say you can, you, you, you cannot use the software for, uh, for analyzing the data, for re regular absorbance data or fluorescence data for that matter. But uh, now I'd like to discuss a particular experimental example that makes use of both PDA for data acquisition and our Pro-K4 software for analysis. This is a reaction of acid hydrolysis of triethylamine nickel-2. Now in this example, um, PDA was used to simultaneously acquire multiple absorbance traces, as you can see here on the graph, which is crucial for this reaction because each molecular species has a unique absorbance profile, as you can see on, on the bottom. And because this is not just a simple A to B reaction, Pro-K4 was used specifically to fit the data to a three-state model. Now, overall, um, photodiode array uh, detector enables researchers to acquire time-resolved absorbance spectra from a single stop flow drive. This helps to dramatically minimize sample consumption. So if you can imagine, if you wanted to repeat the same experiment using a simple absorbance detector, you have to do multiple drives at different wavelengths and, uh, over and over and over again to obtain the same amount of information that you can obtain with a single uh, drive and using a PDA detector. Um, and Because of various detection options based on spectral ranges, you also have data that would be otherwise, again, very time consuming to obtain with a conventional absorbance setup. Um, in addition, PDA-based experiments, I think greatly benefit from our specific Pro-K4 software for global fitting of multi-wavelength kinetic data sets um, and that I think can give you better, much better insights into the nature of your reaction mechanisms uh, that you're aiming ultimately to characterize. And uh, with this, I'd like to say, uh, again, thank you for your attention. And uh, to learn more, you can visit our website, photophysics.com, or uh, get in touch with us uh, to discuss our uh, products and services. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.